Hey guys, King Gath here, and welcome to another episode of Bethesda Mod School. So in this episode, I am going to go over how you can use kit bashing within the creation kit to take existing models that Bethesda has already provided and create new variations on them by bashing together a bunch of different pieces. So if you're familiar with creating things like static collections or of creating objects from different types to the static type and things like that, then you can probably skip this tutorial. You probably already know this. But for those of you who are fresh to modding and looking for a way to get some cool stuff built, especially if you're looking to create special new workshop objects, that's where this is particularly powerful, then uh, definitely watch through this whole thing. So we're going to assume that you've watched the CK101 video or understand the basics such as how to open a file, how to manipulate the camera in 3D space within the creation kit, how to open up forms and drag them into the render window. If you don't know any of that stuff or any of that, if you're not sure, go watch the CK101 video in this series and that will get you caught up to where you need to be. All right, so the first thing I'm going to show you that might be new is that you are going to set yourself up a cell to work in. So the easiest way to do that is to duplicate an existing cell. So what we're going to do is make sure your world space is set to interiors on the cell view window. And you're going to find the very first cell there. It should be AAA markers. And uh, note up at the top here, I am loaded into my 101 test plugin. This is a plugin I created for the CK101 tutorial. If you don't have a plugin that you're working on that you want to do this in, or if you want to start a new plugin, uh, remember to go to file data and just load up fallout4.esm if you're starting a new plugin. And if you want to work on an existing one to make sure you have that loaded right now. So we're going to create a copy of a cell that we can do all of this work in, and that's specifically for these demonstrations, but I'm also going to talk about why it's useful to have this in general. So what we'll do is you'll select this AAA marker cell in the cell view window. You're going to right click on it and you're going to hit duplicate cell. Then you're going to click on the copy that was created so that it's highlighted and then click it again. And just wait a second, it can be a little bit of a delay before this triggers, but it should allow you to rename that cell. So like I will mention throughout all of these videos is you should come up with some sort of prefix for yourself, something that you can quickly search for that's unique that you'll be able to find all of your items on. I find that starting things with KG is great and there's rarely anything in the base game that even comes up if I search for those two letters next to each other. So I use those to start. So in this case, I'm just gonna call this uh, CK or KG test as my prefix. And I like to put uh, an underscore in there in most things uh, to keep my stuff separate. I, not, I believe in the cells, it removes those automatically, but we'll find out in a moment. But uh, I'm going to use KG test as the prefix for all of the items that we create in today's tutorial. So I'm going to just call this uh, building stage. It's something that those of you who have done work with the creation kit tutorials from the Sim Settlements building kit, you'll know that uh, I like to use that particular name. And building stage for me is just, it's a space, it's a cell that I use to put together things and I like to keep them there. And uh, we'll, we'll show you all that in a second. So once you've, you're have you satisfied with the name you've created, just push the enter key. And yes, it does remove the underscore, so you, can't, you cannot use those in those cell names. So then once you've named your cell and you're happy with it, you're gonna double click it and that's gonna open it up in this window over on the right here, the render window. So then what you're gonna do is, uh, you're gonna click on this render window so it's highlighted. You're gonna hold down, uh, and I, that hacky yeah, doesn't work in this program. So uh, one thing I mentioned in uh, another video in the, in the, CK101 video, thank you, uh, that uh, a lot of the hotkeys from various programs will work in the creation kit. For example, Control-Z does an undo, Control-C is a copy, things like that. So there's often a lot of overlap. One of the ones that uh, I thought was in here, it turns out it's not, was Control-A, and that's what I was just trying to do. So Control-A to select all is not a uh, thing. So we're gonna do it this way. If we go to the cell view window and we uncheck selected only, you're gonna see all the different items that are in this cell. Now, the, the one that you are not gonna to wanna to select here is the nav mesh, but you're gonna click on the first one below nav mesh, and then you're gonna hold the shift key and click on the last one in that list so that you've got all of these highlighted. Now, this is very important. I'm about to tell you to press the delete key, but never do it while the cell view window is highlighted. If you, press del if you were to press delete right now, it would delete the original forms of all of these things you have selected, not the instances, and we'll talk about that in just a second, not these references here, it will delete the actual forms. So let's cover that real quick. This is a, a thing that you might have gotten in the CK101 tutorial, but I might have not gone into enough, enough depth. 
All of these records that are in the object window, these essentially are a template. They represent, it's kind of, imagine like a, a stamper. Imagine you have a, an old school, like children's stamper that you could use to, you know, put stamp on a pad to get ink and then you stamp it on a piece of paper. These are those stamps. And then any of the objects in the render window you see here, those are just the stamp applied to the piece of paper. They're just a copy of that thing, essentially. Deleting these copies, the, the actual stamped on thing, that's okay. Deleting these here, it can cause a big problem. Uh, there are a couple of issues that can come from that. Uh, one, if you release a plugin into the world, if you release a mod out there, and you later delete one of your own objects, you will cause corruption in that player's save game if they were to update to your new version of the mod. So you don't want to do that. You basically never want to be deleting the forms out of here uh, unless it's before release. But it's so totally safe to delete things out of cells. So now that I have everything selected here, you're going to make sure you're clicked on the title of the render window. And then you'll just push that delete key on your keyboard and all of those items will go away. And now you have yourself a nice empty building stage. So this next step is going to seem a little weird, but the reason we're about to do this is because of uh, a couple of reasons. One is that the creation kit has a little bit of a quirk to it, and two, you need to do some physics testings on the objects you're going to be creating. So um, what I mean by physics testing is that when you're creating things, you're going to enable gravity essentially, and you're going to see how your objects react. And that's going to be really important later on in this tutorial when I show you how to take different items that aren't necessarily meant to be static. And by static, I mean just totally frozen in space, have no have no uh, way to fall or anything like that. Once you start mixing that type up with other types, like for example, uh, the miscellaneous items you can pick up on the ground, or if you remember from Skyrim, the like wheels of cheese you could pick up uh, for Fallout 4 players. I don't know what, what things, I don't know if anybody does anything crazy they collect that I have seen, uh, but any of that stuff you can pick up by holding on to your activate key so that you pick it up, that kind of movement, those are non-static. And uh, anything that you can't really interact with or touch, those are static. Well, all of the different models can be used as statics uh, with a little trick, but sometimes they can still end up affected by physics or gravity. So you need to test for that when we get to that. So to make sure that our items don't disappear and become inaccessible, what we're going to do is build ourselves a little platform so that we always have access to our items. If they fall, they'll get caught by this platform. Um, so what you're going to want to do is go into the object window and you're going to scroll toward the very bottom and make sure that uh, world objects here is expanded. So if you look at each of the highest level categories, they have a plus sign next to them. If you push that, you'll expand it to some more. Then we're gonna click on static as our uh, the next category. And then up at the top here in the uh, filter, we're gonna just search for floor. And this will bring up a bunch of different floors. And it doesn't really matter which one you use. I'm going to just grab the uh, airport floor. It's probably huge, or at least it will have uh, physics to it. And that's all I care about. So once you've got a piece of floor there, now you're going to learn something new that I don't think I should cover in the CK101 tutorial. So if you double click on an item in the render window, you'll bring up the reference properties screen. And this allows you to control, fine tune specific details about an item. So in the CK101 tutorial, I showed you how to move things with your mouse. This is a way to get precise movement and positioning uh, because you can actually enter in the 3D coordinates and the rotation. So what you're gonna wanna do here is make sure that everything here, all of the X, Y, and Z positions are zero and the X, Y, and Z rotations are zero. And this basically ensures you have an absolute centered object and that's very useful uh, and we'll talk about why in a little bit, but just make sure it's all at zero, zero there. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to push the letter Q on our keyboard if this, and then make sure that this snapping icon on the top left of your screen is highlighted with blue in the background. If it's not, push Q again to make sure it is, or just click on that and make sure that it's blue. And essentially what we've done there is we've made sure that uh, our movement is gonna snap nicely so we can make ourselves a little grid. All right, next, another good hotkey, you're gonna press Control D, and this will duplicate the current item you have selected. So you won't be able to see, obviously, because the items are right in inside of each other, but only the one that you just, or that you originally had selected will be selected at this moment. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down the letter X on our keyboard and drag, and you'll see that it drags nicely off to one side. Then we're gonna select on the middle one again. Uh, once again, hit Control D to make a copy. Hold X again and drag in the other direction until they are aligned nice side by side. So we're gonna cover one thing real quick here. Uh, you may have noticed that as I was moving through, there's kind of a little flickering going on and you've probably seen that in the game occasionally where there's flickering. Uh, that is called Z fighting and essentially what it means is that two items in the game 
are have the exact same world space in a in a, according to the camera. I'm sorry, I stumbled over my words there. Uh, so it's basically when the game goes to render that, it doesn't know which one that it should show you because both of them are in the exact same position relative to the camera. And so it ends up flickering between them so that it can try and show them both. Well, you don't want that ever to happen. So you want to make sure that there is uh, no overlap whatsoever. If you ever see flickering in the game, that's because somebody left some overlap. So we're going to move. And if you're not sure if you can see flickering or not, the best thing to do is just move it one space past till you see that nice gap and then just slide it back one more. And then you're in good shape there. Whoops. And I just hit a really cool hotkey, which I'm going to show you guys in a little bit. Uh, but uh, we're going to we're gonna now take our three pieces and we're going to select them all. Now to do that, you select one and hold the control key and then just click the others. And that allows you to select multiple things. And once again, we're going to hit control D and that is going to make a copy of all of those. Then we're going to hold the letter C and drag upward until we have those lined up and repeat one more time holding C and dragging downward. So now those pressing X and C, that just allows us to move specifically along that direction so that if we're, we don't have to be completely stable with our mouse movement. So we don't actually, for in reality, you didn't actually have to hold X. You could easily just kind of eyeball it and drag, but it would likely be imperfect. And so the holding those letters just makes it a lot easier to be stable with your movements. All right, so once you've got a nice three by three uh, set up here, you're pretty good. That's usually a good enough size to catch any items that might fall when you're doing gravity testing. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab all of these and we're gonna hold the letter Z and we're gonna just drag down away. We just wanna get this out of the way. Uh, and so it's still gonna be able to catch things, but it's also going to not occupy the zero, zero, zero space, which you're gonna find out is gonna be very important for what we're about to learn. All right, so I'm gonna save now that I have this up because this would be a useful plugin to have just to start with if you wanna ever build um, some static collections or do some kit bashing. It's just having a custom cell set up that has this little platform for catching when you're doing physics testing. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that so that I can roll back to this later if I want to. In fact, I'll probably off camera make a copy of this so that uh, I have it so I can start up these particular types of tutorials in the future. All right, so now let's get into the basics of, of kit bashing within the creation kit. So first of all, note that what we're going to be doing will only work with static objects. So that means that there are, there are things that show up under this static category. Effectively, you can take just about anything you find in here and you can combine them together to make a, cert, a single object. In fact, a lot of the stuff that's included in the base game was done this way. You'll find that there are a lot of items out in the world that are actually just kit bashed things that Bethesda th did themselves. And you can actually find them in the creation kit in this static list because they will have this green SC icon. That stands for static collection. And if you find any of those, it means that Bethesda itself did what I'm about to show you. And those in themselves cannot directly be included uh, in a kit bash, but I'll show you how you can get around that uh, later on. So to start, we're going to just build something really, really simple. So I'm going to search up a particular kit that I'm very comfortable with uh, that I use all the time. And that is the shack kit. So I'm going to type in shack uh, and then I'm going to do asterisk and the asterisk is a wild card to help you filter. And then I'm going to type in floor and that's going to bring up all of the different floor pieces that fit the vanilla uh, kind of the vanilla kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The uh, workshop kit of like wood and real rusty metal, that kind of look to it. Uh, I really like that kit and it's used a lot in Sim Settlements. But essentially what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna build a real real tiny little structure. Now you don't have to build structures, you can build anything you want with this. You can build new workbenches or new decorations or whatever it is you have in mind. Uh, but just for the sake of uh, demonstrating this, I'm just gonna throw together a few random pieces. So uh, once you've found your first piece, what you wanna do is you're gonna double click it and you're gonna set it to zero, 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 just like you did with the very first floor piece that you set down. And you set that for the rotation. If it somehow got screwed up, realistically, the first time you drag something in the rotation should be zero, zero automatically, so you shouldn't have to do anything with that. So now you'll notice that my object is now floating well above the floor, and that was intentional, and I want that. And that's because when I'm done setting all the items up here, I'm gonna need to select them all, and I don't want the stage to get in the way. So another thing we could do here, and we're gonna go ahead and do this now just because I want you guys to get into the practice, is we're gonna go ahead and put our little stage catcher here on its own layer. So we're gonna come down to the layers panel. We're gonna type hit new layer, 
and we're going to make up a new layer name using our prefix and this the layers you can use underscores in unlike the cells so we're going to go kg test and we're going to go uh, physics catcher is what we're going to call that and once we've got that done we're going to highlight click on that layer so it's highlighted and then we're going to select all of our things by using the control method and then make sure we're still clicked on our layer there and hit add selection to layer now you'll see that next to physics catcher it says number nine there because there are nine floor pieces that i put there so now i can toggle those off by hiding them so that's another way you can go about uh, doing this i'm going to do both i like having it setting down below so that way when i'm doing physics testing i can see the object physically drop to know that it actually has uh, incorrect collision on it and uh, yeah, and then we can hide it as well if we're having trouble selecting our item or if our item happens to dip so low that it's kind of cutting into those. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put, and I, I am gonna build some more things, but I'm just trying to give you guys the basics to start. So the first thing we did, we picked a, a random piece out of here we liked, and we uh, put it to zero, zero. And uh, one more thing I'll, I'll let you know is that you don't have to drag things into this window to see them. Another thing you can do is right click on their object window forms and you can hit preview object uh, preview here it is uh, and when you have preview the preview open there's a couple of things to know about this preview uh, one is this ground plane this big purple plane uh, can be obnoxious to look at the items and you can just uncheck that ground plane box there in the middle to hide that uh, another thing you can do is press the a key to turn off the lighting uh, so if you just pressing a you can hear probably a beep getting recorded uh, as it's screwing up there but that turns the the lighting in the game on or off so that you can just see things more clearly now note those uh, orange icons that are showing there those are the snap points that uh, would show up in workshop mode because I am using a uh, piece that gets used in the vanilla workshop system so that's showing that's showing you while you're in the creation kit where the snap points would be they're not relevant outside of uh, outside of workshop mode so you can kind of ignore those now if you want to hide them another hotkey that's very useful is one we've talked about before uh, and it doesn't but it does not work in this particular window and that was the m key so if you're ever working in here and you want these to go away so in the render window i can push the m key and it will hide all those little snap point objects so while we have the preview object window one of the things you can do is you can just leave this open and set it off to the side if you're on a multi-monitor setup you can actually drag things outside of the creation kits base window just like you could with something like photoshop so you can use all your monitor space and uh, you can leave that open and then every time you click on a different item in the object window the preview will will pop up immediately so that you have a great easy way to look at items before you actually drop them into your stage another thing you can do uh, in in this creation kit that's really really handy when you're trying to explore the models and find new things is once you drop something into the stage you can hold the alt key and roll your mouse button and you'll actually cycle through all of the objects so you can like quickly cycle through all the objects of a particular type and it only cycles through those of the same category so for example I'm in static right now I can scroll to my heart's content and it will only go through all the statics in the game I don't have to worry about it popping up and bringing me some other type of form so uh, using alt scroll and the preview window are great ways for you to learn kind of what is available in the construction kit for you to do these kit bashings all right, so now back to uh, the step I was going to go to before I realized I needed to show you guys uh, the preview things and how to find new items. What we're going to do here is we're going to set up something called the pivot dummy. And what this does is it allows you to control what the center of your item is. And, and I'll show you why that matters in a few minutes. First, let's just get that thing in there. So we're going to search for static asterisk pivot and you'll find this static collection pivot dummy. This is a very special object. It works a certain way within the creation kit and in exactly the way we need for these particular items. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna drop this in and uh, because it's a, it's a special object, it's a marker type and you can see that in the models, it's called markers. Uh, because I had pushed down to show you to hide the snap points, my, my dummy is actually hidden. So the dummy is this blue uh, funky arrow looking thing and essentially what this thing does is it sets the very center point of your model and that is relevant especially in workshop mode because when the player rotates their item so when they hold down those triggers on their controller or i believe it's the right and left mouse button in workshop mode to rotate around and you guys are probably screaming at me for not knowing that because I, I use an xbox controller exclusively when i'm playing uh, but when you're rotating the item in workshop mode it is going to rotate around wherever this guy happens to be if it was uh, uh, a static collection model so 
Um, the origin point is very important in a model. And so what I like to do is set this thing at 0, 0, 0. So we're gonna go ahead and set that at 0, 0, 0. And then I just build my model around it. Now, the other way you can do this is to build your model first and then add the static collection pivot dummy as one of your last steps and put it where the logical origin would be. So the good place for the origin is to be the, the, the center of mass of the object, generally toward the bottom, basically where you want it to align with the ground is a great spot to be putting that. Uh, but uh, there are exceptions to that where you might want things to rotate in a different way or to have maybe some of the model sinking into the ground and then it's useful to have the origin a little bit up above the ground. So there are a lot of exceptions to this, but for the most part, the best thing to do I find is to just stick that guy at zero 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 and build your model around it so we're gonna do exactly that so I'm gonna shift this up a little bit so that that thing is actually the at the ground and then my model will sit nicely on top of it now notice when I held uh, you and you can tell which key I'm holding because of the color of the of the circle as well as the uh, the direction the arrows pointing but the the Z is blue X is red and C is green, and that determines the axis that it's moving on. Well, you'll notice that when I did that and moved, it jumped up quite a bit, and that's because I still have the snap on. So we're gonna turn that off by hitting Q, and I'm gonna just adjust this so that the bottom of my my little plank here is around the center of that uh, pivot dummy. It doesn't have to be perfect, I just wanna get it uh, roughly there so that my item will sit nicely on the ground uh, when we finally build it in the game. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna throw some random items on here. So I'm gonna go back into uh, my search here and go to shack and we're gonna do wall and we're gonna try and find uh, some simple little walls we can use here. I wanna try and find these half walls. Let's see, flat end, this should probably work, yep. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and toss a couple of these in and uh, once again, we'll hit control, oops, control D to duplicate, slide this guy over here and let's grab another another flat piece. Sure, that'll work. And here's a good spot to use Control Q, which is the, I'm gonna move my mouse over here up in the top left corner. There's the snap to angle. This will allow the angles to be nice. So then you can snap kind of at uh, 45 degree increments so I can get it nicely lined and square. And uh, we'll do that there. And then we're gonna go back to, uh, we're gonna do shack ceiling. And okay, ceiling is not available. And it could sometimes these are in the opposite order. So you might need to switch it around. Other times it's going to be called something different. So in this case, we'll try shack roof. There we go. That's what we wanted. And we're looking for a tiny little roof piece if we have one. So mid roof small. Yep, perfect. Uh, another thing you can learn from what I'm doing right here is that wherever you drag something and drop it onto, it will try to place the origin of that object, so the, the point of that's considered the center of the object. So if you imagine what I was talking about with that static collection pivot dummy, it would be where that existed on that particular object. When you drag into the window, it will try and place that on whatever object in 3D space that your mouse was near when you let go of the mouse button. Um, so one thing you'll see that's kind of interesting with these roof pieces is that their origins are intentionally floating way above their pieces and that's so that when you drop them onto a floor they are approximately the height needed to make sure that an npc can pass under them cleanly so it's a real useful feature that they do that that they in intentionally put the origins off on ceiling pieces up high enough so that that kit will work nicely and we're going to just go ahead and let this clip through because we're trying to look make something that's real scrappy looking um and there we go. Now we basically have ourselves a uh, part of an outhouse. So we would just need to uh, throw a door on there and a hole in the ground and we'd be good to go. Uh, but it doesn't really matter what you build. You can build whatever you want. Like I said, you can use this for workbenches, clutter, decorations, machinery. In fact, there's a whole kit in the creation kit designed to make machinery. And most of the machines you find scattered throughout the factories in, in Fallout 4 are done through this method. All right, so once you've got your object built, you're gonna just select everything. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can go ahead and select everything by just dragging a box around it and make sure your camera's such that you're not grabbing those floor pieces. Alternatively, you could hide your physics catcher layer and just grab everything that way to make it a lot easier. Um, another thing we didn't do and that uh, was was very bad um, and that's that in general the best practice is to build everything on a new layer so uh, rather than uh, go re-record all this I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, retro fix this so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another one we're gonna call this KG test outhouse outhouse let's spell that correctly 
Uh, and then we're going to, we've got our item selected. We'll select our outhouse layer and hit add selection to layer. And now that is isolated. And the reason that, that is really powerful to do it that way is to make sure your things are on their own layers is that if you need to come back and edit these later, you've always got this layer set aside that you can work from. So we're going to go into our, uh, we're going to hit the the A row here or the uh, A column rather in our outhouse to make sure that any additional items we add end up there. And now here's a here's a trick for selecting items on a layer. And once again, another reason this is super useful is you can right click on that layer and hit select all loaded references in layer, and that will also grab all of those items. So that uh, so now our, our items selected, we are ready to create our first uh, mashup. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can right click and choose make static collection. You can also use the hotkey alt plus O, which will bring up the prompt that right clicking and doing it would as well. So that's just the hotkey to do it. So once you get that, there are a couple things that might happen here. Now, if you correctly used only static objects, so if you remembered to only use static records to build your thing here, you will get this, the input collection name. And this is effectively allowing you to name this object as a new object that will have the little SC icon here and it will be ready to go. Now, if for some reason some of these records were something else, so for example, if I had put a door in there or if you had put a light or something that wasn't a static type, it will warn you and ask you if you want to create your collection just excluding those particular objects. So it gives you an option so that you still can build it. It will just exclude the items that are not eligible. All right, so we're going to go ahead and import our collection name. We're going to call this like everything else. We're going to start it off with KG test and we're going to name this uh, outpost out outpost outhouse. And I'm gonna I'm gonna add the name S call onto it. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I want to make sure that when I'm creating different things, since everything has to have its own unique name, I, if I decide I want to use KG Test Outhouse for something else, I still can. Now note that I already used it for the layer name, so I wouldn't have been able to use it as a model. But uh, it's nice to be able to a, a lot of things to put the type of form it is in there, so that you can use that name for multiple things. So that's something I do frequently. I would put. Ask call for static collections. When I'm building armor, I'll put AO or AA, which again, we'll cover all that stuff way down the line. But there's use, there's reasons to put in the type of form it is in the, in the name, and that's because the name has to be absolutely unique, and it just makes it easier to figure out what you're working with. So we're going to call that outhouse S call. Again, S call standing for static collection. Uh, the reason that I went with S call and not say, for example, SC is based on something that Bethesda uses that you run into a lot in Tez edit or the FO4 edit program, the third party modding tools, is that each record type has a four letter association with it that identifies it in the file format. And for static collections, it happens to be SCOL. So that's kind of a, a just me using some information I, I know from that as uh, to form that habit. All right, so the next thing you're going to get is the input object window filter. Generally, you're just going to push OK to this. Now, uh, what I assume this does, and I've never actually played with it, and this is this could be a great time to learn, is I assume that you can type in part of the name and then it will remove certain parts from your selection. Again, this is probably worth experimenting with. I might do it off camera. For the most part, if you're if you're looking to just create static collections from what you have collected, you're always going to just press OK to this. All right, so then what you're going to find is if you were to look down at the cell view window, you will see that you're now selected on your new object with the SC, and you'll see that all the other objects are gone, so that uh, I only have this left, which goes against what I had just said about being able to edit that. And this is where I'm going to show you another cool trick. So once you have a static collection created, and uh, before we go any further, I want to prove to you that we actually have this object created and it's usable anywhere, is if you go up into our object window filter here, and we type start typing in the name of our object you'll see that it's now available as a form and uh, or as a record and you know that anything that exists here this is the stamp and we can stamp it around so we can go ahead and just drag this all over and make copies and now we've got copies of our entire thing and not just so we don't have to sit there and manually rebuild this thing over and over again we can place these outhouses all over the game world if we want um, so I'm going to delete these extra copies. So if you want to do edits on your static collection, what you would do is fragment it. And you can do that in one, one of two ways. You can right click and choose fragment static collection, or you can use the hotkey alt plus the letter U. Now, when you choose to do a fragmentation, it will ask you if that's sure, which, if you're sure you want to do that. One thing I will tell you to monitor for this is make sure that whatever layer your object came from, that you want your, your fragmented pieces. And basically what fragmenting means is break the static collection back up into the original pieces you created it from. If you want them to end up on the layer that you expect, make sure that A is checked in there. So if for some reason 
that is not just click on that make sure that that a is in your in the column for your particular layer row because all of those objects are going to get placed on that particular layer so if i didn't have that they would end up in the default layer and the default layer tends to be pretty messy so then we're going to say yes and now we'll see we have all of our six original items back so if we look at this here and if you can tell by you can click in here and you can click those individual items so now we could make edits uh, and then we could recreate our static collection and you'll see that our original static collection record we created is still here and we can still use it we can still stamp it into the game world and it works as expected so even though that warning is scary and it sounds like you're undoing your work it's actually just kind of worded poorly and uh, doing that is totally safe in fact I recommend just go ahead and cracking this thing open immediately just so that you have access to the original parts and you can quickly come back in here and make tweaks to it in the future all right so the next piece we're going to talk about here uh, is just redoing uh, your static collection. So let's say you want to make a little tweak to it or add another item. So for example, let's say we decide we want to add our toilet in. So we're going to go ahead and search for toilet in the statics here. And we're going to grab one of these broken toilets. Yeah, that one looks nicely and it looks nice. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just drag this around till it's somewhere that we want it. Sure, that works for me. And then we're going to once again select our items press that alt o hotkey to create the static collection and here's where you can you have the option to update so if we go back in and let's find the exact name of our one we were trying to update you can actually if you select this you can copy that uh, name so i've got that name copied to my clipboard now you can also and i did that with control c um, you can also just look at this and type it out manually but if you name a collection exactly the same as another one you'll have the option to overwrite the previous one so i'm going to hit okay to that and it'll ask you it's static collection already exists with this editor ID. Check it out and overwrite its data. You'll say yes to that. When you do that, be certain that you did it to the right one. Otherwise, you could overwrite random other static collections. And now, if uh, if I go ahead and place this down, you'll see that the toilet is there. So that uh, you can go ahead and update those. And if I had already placed some of these in the world and I did that, it would update all of those versions out in the world as well. So it's a very, very powerful system, even for decorating the game world. Uh, but it's also very powerful because you can actually use these objects as long as they're made entirely out of assets created in vanilla for workshop items that will work even on PS4. So I'm sure many of you have heard that PS4 players are very, very restricted on the mods they can use. They cannot add any custom assets. That means they can't have any new textures or new model files or new custom scripts. But these static collections are kind of a way around that. So you can build new items uh, and for, for uh, PlayStation users, and they can get full access to them. And we'll cover how to make these buildable in workshop mode in a future video. Uh, primarily, I just wanted to show you how to build static collections so you can start creating new items. There are plenty of tutorials out there if you want to skip ahead, but otherwise, you'll just keep an eye on my series, and eventually we'll get to that. But I, I mostly want to show you this static collection system because it's very, very powerful. Um, there are a lot of things you can do with it. And for those of you interested in making some settlements mods, this is a core uh, thing we use throughout development of mods for some settlements. And uh, so I wanted to make sure that everybody had that as a base of how to do that. All right, so there's a couple other things that are worth covering for static collections because I'm sure there's a lot of things you guys are going to want to go play with and do with these. So the first thing to note is that once you have a static collection created, if you double click on its on its window or on its uh, form in the object window, you'll bring up its uh, details and there's a cool button in here called recreate NIF from data. And what that'll do is it will create inside of your Fallout 4 data slash messages folder and then this. So if you were to go to your Fallout 4 folder, then go to data and then meshes and then follow this path. So go to ask call and then the name of your plugin and then find the, the file that's named with uh, this funky ID here. This will be a copy of your file that you could then use to do things like import and edit in 3D software if you know what you're doing there. And obviously a lot of you are probably, that's way outside of your realm of expertise and that's okay, but it's a useful thing to know because there are some really powerful things you can do with that later on. But essentially the creation kit is capable of generating new model files and that's very, very useful. We make heavy use of that in some settlements. And I just wanted to show you guys that while we were talking about static collections. All right, so now the next thing that's gonna come up that you guys are likely gonna wanna do is build stuff out of more than just the statics. You're probably already thinking about how useful this could be to do stuff like add decorations. Like for example, 
well, let's say we wanted to add some toilet paper in there or some magazines for these people to read in our little outhouse. Well, a lot of that stuff is not available as statics, but almost all of it can become static. So I'm gonna just show you a real simple trick. Now, and, and this doesn't work every single time. There are some exceptions to that, and this is where that physics testing comes in, but I'm gonna show you uh, roughly the, the simple way to take models of different types and reuse them as, uh, as statics. So we're gonna start with uh, what I just talked about, which is uh, the magazine idea. So we're gonna go ahead and type in the word uh, magazine here. And we're gonna scroll back up to items, make sure that's expanded, and then click on book. And it looks like they aren't called magazine in the base game, so we shorten that. So it looks like their mag is short for that. And this is a common thing you'll have to do in the creation kit. Don't just give up if your first filter doesn't work. Just try filtering for a, sh a smaller portion of the word. Bethesda likes to abbreviate a lot of this stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and give them a uh, Guns and Bullets magazine. Now, obviously, we don't wanna give them the, the perk magazine, and you couldn't move that, attach that to the static collection anyway because it's not a static type. But what we're actually interested in is the model that makes up this particular book. So almost every single object in the creation kit, and I say almost because obviously things, uh, there are a lot of exceptions to this where it won't be the case, but most objects have a, are an art field or a model field. So in the case of books, it's called the world art field. Uh, for a lot of things, it's actually called the model field. So for example, if we just wanted to grab some generic holotape model, if we wanted its model, you will find that it has a, a model field. And essentially what you can do is you can just select this. So just drag your mouse over it, and we're gonna do it to our world art here. So you drag your mouse over it, and make sure you go all the way, start all the way at whatever end is exposed. So if you can see the beginning there, start at that end. If for some reason you can see the end of the word NIF, which NIF is the custom file format that Bethesda uses for all of their model files. Uh, but basically you're gonna drag from one end to the other until it stops. Now here's a tricky part. You need to make sure that you're, if you're gonna use hotkeys, you need to make sure that your mouse is highlighted over that field or this won't work if you wanna use Control Z, Control C, excuse me, to copy. Alternatively, you can usually right click in there and, and hit copy and that will grab all of that text. So now that we have that, now we're gonna go back down here to World Objects Static. And then you're going to, and, and I just missed a great opportunity to teach you guys another trick, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So one of the things that you'll notice is that anytime you go to certain large categories, static is a particular brutal one, uh, that have a lot of items in there, it could take a long time for them to load. But what you can do is before you click on such a category, if you just type in some arbitrary thing, like for example, if you type in your prefix, then when, so like let's say we were on, let's go back to books just for a full demonstration. So I've got KG test typed in. When I click on static, it will automatically filter for just those items and it goes so much faster to load. So it's great to just do a filter before you change categories to make sure that you don't get overwhelmed by items. So whenever that filter box is empty, the game or the creation kit is gonna have to load up every single item of that type. All right, so once you're in the static type here, now you're gonna learn something new in the creation kit. You can right click on this sign here and hit new. And this will, as long as you're selected on one of the subcategories, so you can't do it from the all category or one of the header categories, but as long as you're in one of the subcategories, if you right click over here and hit new, it will create a brand new form that, of that type so that you can actually type stuff in here. So um, in our ID field, that's that unique name. That's the name that uh, shows up in the, in the filter box. That's what you search for. Like everything else, we're going to go KG uh, test for our prefix, and we're going to call this thing um, Outhouse Magazine, or Mag, we'll use the same short prefix that uh, Bethesda uses, and we'll call this uh, Guns and Bullets 01. And then we're going to leave the display name blank. Note that if you're going to be making workshop objects, things that the player can build, you always need to have a display name field here. Uh, and that's the field that will show up when the player highlights it in the game. So in this case, I have no intention of doing that. It might be a good habit to just always type in a display name, but uh, I'm not going to bother. And then you're going to click edit on this model on the uh, model field here and then right up in this box you're going to click in there and again this is another one of those ones where if you use the hotkey your mouse has to remain over there it's a weird quirk with creation kit we'll hit Control v to paste that in alternatively you could right click in there and choose paste and you'll see that it fills in a bunch of information and on the right there an image appears and uh, it's all black right now and this is that thing i told you before uh, in the preview window if you push a you will change the lighting so you can remove the generic non-existent lighting and you'll see that we've got uh, an episode, a issue of grognak here. That might be confusing. Why is it grognak when we grabbed guns and bullets? 
Uh, this is another really cool thing you can do in the creation kit, and that is material swaps. We'll cover those in way more detail later. I'll show you how to make your own custom material swaps and everything, but for now, uh, just know that most of the vanilla items that have alternate textures, you can just pull down this material swap and they will be available. So for the magazine, that's not the case, and that's fine. We're gonna just use this as a grog neck magazine for this particular example. I'll show you all these material swap things later, but the first time you come in and paste a model, if you check here, there's often material swaps you can just use. Uh, alternatively, you can also do custom material swap, but again, I'll dedicate an entire tutorial to material swaps because they're really cool. So for now, what we're going to do is we're just going to rename our, our book as uh, Grognak, and that's fine. Um, so we'll just call this Grognak. I don't even know what episode or what issue that is right now, so I'm just going to put this as Grognak sample. Again, just for the sake of uh, for this demonstration. Uh, and you'll, you'll learn all of this eventually. So once we've got that in place, we're effectively done. We've got ourselves a nice new static we can use, so you just push OK and it will create a new record and because i was already filtered on my own on my own prefix it came right up as a list as an item in the list all right so now we're going to fragment our static collection once again making sure that our outhouse layer is got the active thing there and we push alt u for the hotkey say yes and after a second or two it appears there we're going to go ahead and drag in our magazine and now here's something where uh, things can get a little wonky with the rotation on there. There's a trick you can use here that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't, but it's when it does work, it feels real good. If you hold the Alt key and you drag something, it will try and attach itself in a way that makes sense on that particular surface. So you can see there that it attached itself nicely to the, surf to the surface of the toilet, which was awesome, uh, so that it's perfectly smooth, and then I don't have to worry about the rotation. Now let's say I want to rotate this thing uh, so that it's not perfectly even like that. So I don't want to rotate it maybe a little bit around uh, the center here. Uh, there's a couple of things you can do. First of all, if you just were to, to go ahead and uh, right rotate, it, uh, it might work just fine. And that's probably the first thing you should try. I'm going to do that with turning off the snapping. So I'm going to click on that up there. Again, that's control Q you could have used to do that. And you can just kind of rotate and get it a little side angle. Now, what usually will happen here, and it's probably happening with this, but it's hard to tell because of how, how subtly uh, close this is to the toilet. What will tend to happen is as you rotate things that are already rotated, so you can see this thing is not flat anymore. It's rotated already in this angle. So if I rotate on another angle, often what will happen is things will clip together. And this is an advanced thing, so don't worry about this if you don't understand what I'm about to show you. It's okay, you'll get it eventually, but I'm gonna show it for people who are a little more advanced and, and are following along with this. This little button up here, is local to global translation. If you find that rotating, th if you've got an item rotated in one direction and you need to rotate it in another direction as well, it's great to hit this button and do your second rotation. And essentially what that does, and I'll show you, you'll, you'll be able to see it visually in just a second here. Um, so right now you see how the, the, when I hold Z, my up and down is exactly pointing out flat and like the circle is laying flat with the magazine. Whereas if I turn that off and I push that Z, it's instead flat to the world, so it's flat, so the circle is flat to like the floor pieces and everything. That's how it rotates around. So when you're holding down that right mouse button and rotating it or using this, it's rotating around whatever you see when you push that. And so by switching it to local versus global, it just makes the rotation a lot cleaner often. So we're gonna give this a little bit of a local rotation so it's a little, little offset there. There, that feels good to me. Uh, and then we'll turn that back off. And, and that toggle right there, for those of you who understood what I'm doing there, just push the G, letter G, and that can toggle that on and off. Uh, again, if you don't understand that rotation stuff, don't worry about it. It's definitely more advanced. And we'll, we'll go over, I'll keep reiterating it because it's such a powerful feature uh, that will make decorating way, way easier for you guys. And we'll definitely be covering more decorations and things like that in the future, especially when we do uh, more Sim Settlements tutorials. Uh, but yeah, so now we've got our nice little magazine there. And we're going to once again select everything, use our hotkey of Alt O. And we're going to once again grab our outhouse S call, hit OK, and say yes. And it'll update our little stamper there. And you can tell when it's done because uh, the item down here in your cell window will, will convert and all the other ones will disappear. Uh, and then you can see we can stamp in and our little Grognak magazine is in fact in the copies as well. So you can do that with just about any item. You can go into these any of these world objects. So there's activators where you can find a lot of interesting things like uh, that aren't available. Otherwise, there are tons of things available under the items categories. So that's where you can find things like ammunition and armor and weapons, uh, things like that. With armor and weapons, they're a little trickier. You can't actually use a lot of the models exactly as is because of the mod system. So for example, in the game, you know, you can take a weapon and change out its stock and things like that. So the actual models are broken into pieces 
And uh, to help you guys with that, I've actually released, along with this video, a modder's resource, which is a set of the weapons that we use for decoration in some settlements. I've released their model files so that people can use those uh, separately. And uh, we're not, while we're not going to cover in this video how you create a, uh, a model from a custom one by default, I think you can figure it out based on what we just did with that. Hint, hint, this model field here. Uh, but uh, yeah, those, that uh, modder's resource will give you access to some weapons. To work with we cover just about every vanilla weapon uh, so that we could use them for decorations and that'll get you uh, weapons you can play with as statics so that makes uh, your life a lot easier we'll likely get into how you can create statics for more objects in the future uh, but in the meantime uh, just know that basically any model field you find can be translated over and used as a static type all right so now that we did that now we're going to show you the col the collision testing so or the havoc testing as it were so once you've got your uh, static collection set up in the way you like it, you're going to save your plugin, and you're going to hit this little Run Havoc Sim button up here. It's like a letter HK. It looks like a little bouncy ball over it. You're going to click on that, and as long as your object stays still, you've won. You've got a great working object that will be able to be used all through the game. Now, if instead your object sinks to the ground, that likely means that something you used in your object is no good. It has it has collision that is becoming the default collision. Um, this will often happen if you take, for example, a bunch of the item type. So if you were to take a bunch of things under the items category and then use those and use their models to create new stacks. Oh, excuse me. So say, for example, you took a bunch of Nuka-Cola bottles or something and you and you combine them all together as new statics and made that they might fall to the ground because they all have by default that collision you expect to move in the game. The fact that you can shoot at them and they go flying or that you could pick them up and drop them. Uh, anything that does that, if you have too many of those items or if they just happen to be in the wrong order when you're selecting them, they can end up uh, taking over the physics and they'll fail that uh, Havoc test. And when that happens, what you end up wanting to do is just break your static collection and then just remove a couple of items, rebuild it, do the test again, and just keep doing that until you figure out, until you narrow down which particular object is causing your physics to go wonky. Now, occasionally, you can get lucky, and what's actually causing it is just the order that you're selecting the items because the creation kit does care about the order that you're selecting them. Now, the one exception is that it always treats that... Uh, static pivot dummy as the last object and that's it's only relevant when you get into real tech details but again because there might be some people who know a little more or listening they might want to know that uh, but if we go ahead and bust this guy up so we hit our uh, alt u hot key here um, so one of the things you could do would be instead of just mass grabbing everything you could grab the pieces individually and try changing the order so say you know grab start with all of your statics and then grab your your converted object types last and if you can't grab them in here you can also do it in the cell view window so I could go in here and grab all of my other objects and make sure I grabbed the one I created from a non-static object last and try it that way or try it as the first item you select those are some things you can try occasionally that will make it work there's no we don't know the exact science that the creation kit uses on determining which collision is used when it creates a static collection so uh, those are some things you can do you can also do collision editing in uh, things like NIF scope and we'll definitely cover that in another video there's a way you could for example uh, let's say our Grognak book was the culprit there we could actually remove its collision and make a copy of the model file and work from that that's way way more advanced and stuff we're not going to cover in this video but just know that there are lots of options so even if you find that you're you're failing the havoc test no matter what you do uh, eventually i will show you how to fix those things and you'll be able to get that model working so get used to that i would say uh in general in modding is that if you get to a point where you hit kind of a brick wall and it feels like you can't do something i would say put a pin in it if you really love the idea, when you learn how to fix it, you'll come back and fix it, and you'll and you'll be able to re-embrace that idea. Alternatively, uh, we do have plenty of resources available in the community. You could join the SimSettlements.com forums. Um, from there, you'll learn about uh, our Builders Toolkit Discord server, where we help people out in real time whenever we can. Um, so there's lots of options you'll have to learn more and ask questions if you're trying to get ahead of where we are in these tutorials. All right, so then the last thing I'm going to show you guys is what it looks like to have a bad item so there's the havoc test that you fail is one thing you can you can fail at or it won't work and another way you can fail is making a corrupt static collection so there are two ways this manifests one is that the creation kit can crash and i'm going to repeat that the creation kit can crash when you go to create a static collection 
That is super important. And the reason why, and something I didn't do in the first showing of this tutorial, is that we should save every time before attempting to create a static collection. Imagine, if you will, if you had spent all of this time building this intricate model, hadn't saved yet, and then for the, and then immediately go to create the static collection and happen to cause a crash, you would then lose all of that work and everything would have to be re-replaced. Whereas if I save, and it turns out that something in here causes a corruption and causes the creation kit to crash. When I load back up, I'll just be back at this step again. And all I'll have lost is clicking a hotkey to create a static collection. No big deal. So I know of an item that uh, will cause uh, a, not a crash, but will cause an issue. Uh, and I believe it's this one. I think it's, yeah. Uh, nope, that's that one. Let's see here. I say I know, an, I, I know a model and then I can't find the dang thing. Uh, it's something curtain. Here it is. All right, so there are certain objects that will definitely screw up. So let's say we wanted to have a curtain here. We'll give these guys some privacy. And uh, we're going to use something I showed you in uh, the CK101, which is holding the S key to scale things. And, uh, you know, it's it's pretty ratty. It's not the best, uh, it's not the best looking uh, protection from uh, eyes. But, uh, you know, it's the, it's the apocalypse. You do, with, you do with what you can. So uh, we've got our little thing there. So now the reason this isn't going to work is because that I know that that curtain actually has animation. And that's something you wouldn't expect from a static, but there are some of them that actually have animation. But I just want to show you what happens when you use this. So if we go ahead and do our, uh, I'm going to save first. <laughs> so we'll do it, do it correctly. We'll hit our Alt-O. Uh, and this time I'm not going to overwrite my other one because I don't know how, I don't want to risk corrupting my file here. But we're going to go outhouse, uh, no good, good test, or go, we'll go no good example. All right, so we do this, hit OK. And you'll see that the object disappeared. The curtains disappeared there. Another thing that can happen, and uh, I don't have a, I can't think of an item off the top of my head that will do this, but another thing that might happen is you might end up with it looking something like this, where it's like there's just, it's so close up in your camera, and there's just like, and then if you zoom out, there's just green lines everywhere, and it's a big giant mess. That means one of the objects in your mesh is incompatible. So there are a couple of ways meshes or NIF files can become incompatible with static collection. One is if they're animated, which is the case of this curtain. Uh, another is if the original object itself was a static collection. So this is where it comes in relevant to the thing, the thing I told you where you can export the NIF. So let's say you had uh, taken your original outhouse and you had exported it and then you built, brought it back in as a new item. So let's, uh, let's just show you what that uh, might look like. So if we had our, uh, if we had our S call and we hit this create, create NIF from data object, Okay, and it created it, and then we went ahead and took this information, and we created a new static record for some reason, and we put it here, and see now it's there. So now this mesh right here, because it originally was from a static collection, even if I had renamed it and moved it, it doesn't matter. Because this object, and we'll 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 name it, uh, we'll name it and save it in there just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Uh, but uh, if I took this thing, the CM blah blah blah. It looks like it's just a normal model file now, but if I were to take this and try and combine it in with another static collection, uh, that will almost assuredly create a, a bad model and it will probably crash the creation kit. So occasionally there are a handful of items that even Bethesda created that originally were static collections and they haven't labeled them as such, which is very unfortunate. But uh, again, that's why you're going to want to get in the habit of saving. It's very rare. There are only a handful of items in the creation kit we found that, that it does this for. And uh, so, yeah, so when you find anything like that, like this invisible items or the crazy greenness or the, the CK crashes, it means that something that you did just is not compatible with static collections. And that's completely normal. This is another one of those things where you can ultimately fix it by using something like NIF scopes where you can take the model and edit it. We're not going to cover that here. But again, it's another one of those things where there is a solution available. It's just not available to you yet unless you are a little more of an advanced user. All right, so now I'm going to show you how you can determine if something has animation. So you can pre-check items before you try and add them in. And that's what this little effects key is here. So I believe if you highlight over, it's animate, animate lights and effects. So if you click on that, and that's probably a good thing you could do before you do your static collection. So even before the Havoc testing, you could do FX testing uh, by running that. And if you find any of your objects are moving around, that means you should not use that particular object in your uh, in your static collection. Now, one of the things that gets kind of annoying about this FX button is that if any of your things were creating some sort of 
particles. So for example, if you had an object that had smoke coming out of it or something for some reason, which there are quite a few models that do that, um, and not, not, I shouldn't say quite a few, that makes it sound like you're gonna run into this all the time, but there are some models that create particles, whether it be drips of water or smoke. Once you push this FX key, those exist in this cell and they will never go away until you relaunch the creation kit, which is really obnoxious. So uh, if you find that some stuff like some fire effects or some sort of a physical effect that would be from particles is, is a, had appeared when you push that and won't go away, you just have to reboot the CK, unfortunately, for those to disappear on you. Um, so not something you're likely to run into anytime soon, but just something worth knowing if you run into that quirk. All right, so that was a lot. You guys just gained a lot of power, a lot of cool stuff you can do. Um, I'm, uh, we'll get to things like building workshop items in the future, but um, there's already plenty of tutorials out there. So if you are interested in the fact that I said you could make buildable workshop items out of this, especially for PlayStation users, um, go ahead and dig around. You'll find tutorials for that real quick. Uh, but yeah, this is. Uh, I think that covers about everything you'll need to know for now about static collections. If someone is more uh, or is thinking a little bit further ahead than I am and knows of something, definitely comment below. I'd be happy to make a follow-up video to cover more in-depth stuff or some things I didn't think about with the static collections. But I think you guys are heavily equipped there to start going to town on those. And when we get to making building plans for some settlements, uh, you will have the knowledge you need to make some cool stuff. All right, guys, go forth and make some cool stuff for the game. You can definitely do that now. And like I will always say, put stuff in the game, put stuff in the game, put stuff in the game. That's going to be your fuel to keep yourself motivated. If you're not putting stuff in the game, you don't know for it doesn't click really that you know how to do this and that uh, it's really worth all of the effort because as you see it in the game, it becomes real. I'm telling you, it, it changes everything once you start getting stuff working in the game. All right, guys, take care and stay tuned for additional tutorials from Bethesda Modsable.